بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم فاروق حسن از بیک ود اے برینڈ نیو ایپیسوڈ آف اسکائی از دا لمٹ ایز یو آل نو آئی ٹرائی اینڈ برنگ ٹو یو پیپل ہو ہیو اچیوڈ اے لاٹ ان دے لائفس ہو ہیو ٹچ دا لائف آف ملینز آف پیپل پیپل ہو ہیو کنٹریبیوٹیڈ ٹو دا سوسائٹی ٹو دا ورلڈ ان جنرل آئی ٹرائی ٹو برنگ دیم ٹو لائٹ اینڈ شو یو دیئر لائف اسٹائل سو دیٹ یو گیٹ انسپائرڈ اینڈ موٹیویٹیڈ today i'm sitting at a person's house it's it's an amazingly decorated house i must say that so first of all i i thought that probably she's an architect also but later she told me that she's not she just has an amazing sense of aesthetics i'm sitting with miss farzana akeb farzana akeb is a poet is a human rights activist is a novelist and uh, has done a lot of research she's done poetry in urdu in english and she's written a lot of uh, books novels so we're going to talk to her and see her journey in life and how she has touched a lot of lives assalam alaikum farzana yes assalam alaikum how are you doing i'm doing well i feel very privileged that you are here with me today yes, the honor is all mine thank you so very much for coming main uh, as soon as i entered the house my first thought was that probably you are an architect also and i was going to take a few tips from you <laughs> how to improvise my study and my uh, you know like bedroom also are you an architect also uh, thank you so very much i i feel humbled and this appreciation is needed <laughs> to any women you know uh, <laughs> art you know poetry is an art artist uh, i i love painting i do very beautiful painting without mm. learning I made world records in poetry without learning poetry. Mm-hmm. I think that is inborn somewhere. Art is inside me. Art is inside me. But I you. haven't studied architect or anything. I studied international development. But yes, people do admire my sense of um, no. decor and you know. And the use of colors, radical colors. Huh? So you are very experimental, I must say that also. Yes, yeah? absolutely. Uh, the way you use red and yellow. and Anyways, uh, Hazana, coming back to poetry. Okay, uh, you've uh, done so much. Uh, I was just going through the list and the kind of awards that you have received. So, were you a born poet? I think I was. Uh, in fact, uh, I grew up uh, amidst the culture of the book because uh, I, I, the year when I was growing, I saw these veteran and big names of uh, art, culture or um, uh, literature in my house, like Faiz Ahmed Faiz, Munir Niazi, Ishfaq Ahmed, Banu Kutsia, um, because my father was uh, with Qaeda Azam in Pakistan moment. And Mashallah. he got married very late after partition. And he wrote quite a number of books about history of Pakistan, award winning books. And he was the first gold medalist of Pakistan moment. So I saw love of book in my house. My father used to convene meetings or uh, literature meetups in the house. And I remember sitting in Faiz Sahib's Goth. You know, oh, and uh, I, my father somehow unconsciously or maybe consciously taught me that book has a worth, writer has a worth. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I, I just, I just, I was inspired. I was always trying to impress my father. I used to write articles. I used to um, uh, go in competition in school, college, uh, Mushaira, Urdu Mushaira and English Mushaira when those declamations were happening. So I used to get trophies, but I didn't realize that uh, one day um, I'll be sitting here and you will come to interview me and when I'll be having the 40 books of highest in the world and I'll make two world records in English poetry. That I didn't know. Um, two years back, I didn't know that uh, this this hidden talent or gift by God is somewhere inside. And that was now, you know, descending like a shower of rain, wow, you know. Wow. And, and day and night I'm writing and I'm, I'm there. So, so why English mostly? Yeah, that's a huge question. And why uh, I, I started very late in English. That, mm-hmm. that is actually yeah. a regret maybe. Uh, because my first book of Urdu poetry was published when I was uh, hardly 18 years mm-hmm. by uh, a renowned uh, group of publication, if I'll mention name here. Um, uh, and uh, Mohsin Dakwi was uh, by then that renowned poet was yes. alive. And they, they called him to give review uh, about this poetry. And he sent his five, six books handwritten that Gulab Mosmo ki Shaira and you know, you are better uh, in the coming years, uh, you will be leading Pakistan and you will bring laurel for Pakistan. I couldn't believe that by that time I said this is my first book and mm. such you know huge compliments are coming 
Then second compliment was by Tariq is his renowned uh, Nilam Gharwale. He yeah. was my teacher. He was my father's friend also. But he, with me, his friendship was quite close. And I sent him a book and he called me and he said, uh, look, Fazana, uh, in the Majlis e Adab we had today, I took your book and we had discussion about your book. And I said, how, sir? And he said, you know what they said, all of us, uh, we said that we see Majid Amjad inside this girl. And I was quite because after after doing my graduation, I was back from Canada to Pakistan. I was disconnected actually with the with the, the Pakistani society and literature. Things. And I was quite that was my inability. And he said, "Jaise un, uh, he has his habit to say, okay, do you know with his husky voice? He Aapko malum hai ke? Aapko malum hai? Aapko pata bhi hai ki majid amjad kaun tha? And I was quite. I said, no, sir, my inability. Um, and he said, we call him Ghalib. Of Urdu literature. Of these times. So he said, We saw Majid Amjad into it and don't stop. Your Nasri Nazam, your open verses Nazam should be done. And you keep writing. And those two compliments were very huge. And in coming years, I wrote six to five more Urdu poetry books. And I received very good reviews. And you know, many poets sang my ghazals even. Recently, Sher Miyadad has compiled on my Urdu poetry is also very attractive. And you know, people uh, admire it. Uh, later on, uh, why English? You asked the question yeah. that I always wanted that my message should should be universal. Mm -hmm. What I want to write, uh, the whole globe should read it. Mm -hmm. So I started writing my English novels mm -hmm. because I was touched with the plight of Muslim women, especially, okay. and with the plight of women globally also. So my subject in novel was research novels, uh, true stories based novels historical novels. So I wrote four to five bestseller on Amazon English novels. Okay. And again on those English novels even um, uh, many uh, Netflix people contacted one of my novels. They contacted they want to make movie on it. Oh really? Yeah. And that was a historical novel Saffron in the Hay Yard and Governor Punjab server uh, had a huge launch about that novel. I was all in the game of my novels and my Urdu poetry and English poetry I used to write you know in my school competition in my Canada in my college magazine I never thought that I could be as progressive as effective in English poetry or as renowned in English poetry uh, but there is one thing I would definitely like to mention here Farooq uh, which I never mentioned but I don't know why I want no, no, uh, in this program. Ahead that uh, whenever I, I used to write, every, uh, every no no novel of mine used to take my three year, my two and a half year. Time. Then I used to think that if on this speed I will continue writing novels, uh, by the time I will leave this world, I will not beat my father who left 15 books behind mm -hmm. and I wanted to write more. You wanted to be, to be I, more speedy. More speedy and I wanted that my pen is not why I am taking two to three years in, in accomplishing. So the thoughts were all there, you just had to pen them down. Pen them in, since I, I, I never thought it, that I am not writing fiction. When you write reality, it automatically takes two, three years when you research about true stories. and But one prayer. Ikra bismi rabbi kalla zi khalq Mayne guzashta das se bara saal Apni har ibadat mein padhi hai And on the other day I was telling to my mom That ma Is ayat ko mayne bara saal I have just recited this Quranic ayat With every namaz of mine And during this corona pandemic Last two years I thought I should I left everything And I said I was at home I was not doing any social work Or anything Or I was not giving time To my human right activities I, I said okay Let's um, interact with global friends So I in, I have hundreds of groups Of English poetry uh, Mystic poetry And even a Nobel Prize group I am the discussion group I started sending my English poems To into your friends that. Globally uh, global, global literature group There are hundreds of thousands of members You and know you are part of A uh, part of many groups So in, during corona pandemic I started sending my English poetry to just get interacted with the global community because Urdu they don't understand. I said, okay, let's uh, share with them. So there are threads are being developed and con conversation is going on. But I was just taken aback. Then people started calling me Rumi. People started better than Tony Morrison. People said better than T. S. Eliot. Who is this Sylvia Plath? And then there were threads. There was inquiry about me. And then. I kept send first I started, tried to send one poem, second poem, third poem, ten poems, fifteen poems. And I said, and even uh, one the Indian minister on my messenger Facebook sent me a message. He said, I have read your poetry and your quotations. You are better than Tony Morrison. And I, and I said, what's happening? I have a global ap uh, approach into me. Urdu is, there are so many big names in Pakistan. Mm. 
then that was the moment I kept on writing and I kept on writing and when my first 11 book launch came and I just sent my books to England, my first copies always compiled in England and then the local copies in Pakistan and first launch happened in, uh, in Alhambra, then uh, second launch happened and within six months I gave 25 books and, uh, and my publisher just called me from England, he said we cannot catch up with your speed. Mm. And do you know that people have this much books in the world? Do you think you made a world record? And then that moment I said, David, I don't know. He said, let me ask um, Guinness Book of World Record if they do have existing. And then within two, three days, he called me and he said, he said that they confirmed that your books are the highest so far and ex they, they don't have any existing record. And then within two years of time today, uh, a week ago, uh, Jim Khanna Club celebrated my latest level. I always give 11, 15 books launch, which never happened in the history uh, of the world. At a world. given point in time. Yeah. But every time people launch one or two, one or one two. two books, uh, they one said book. never happened. I always come with Bakka. 10, 15. I keep writing and within two years, I have now given 40 books to the world. I have made two world record, wow. highest and shortest time. Wow. And and what what is the basic theme or what is the, you know, like, thought process behind this, behind all these books, what what are you trying to convey? Now any I, specific yeah. vision, any specific thought or is it on different topics? Now, uh, now I'll, I'll dare to say, initially mm. I used to, you know, I was scared to yeah. mention, now I'm being little... No, no, now you've written day. 40 books, so... Yeah, yeah. and uh, nobody can write, you know, 100 and 15, 20 poems a day, nobody can. Yeah. And now I, I just sometimes, I myself is surprised. I, I say that somebody is, you know, automatic writing. Somebody is sending messages. Mm. My brain is receiving messages. Mm. Uh, initially, I write it, I write it love poetry. Still, I do write love poetry. Love poetry. I address That's the, the basic theme uh, of all yeah, the poets. I, I write love poetry. I, I like about broken hearts. I, I write about women. I write about poverty. I write about word. But now gradually, 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 now I realize that my last uh, edition which came, they are totally mystic in love of God and that mystic poetry, Sufism, Sufism is dominating it. Oh. And I don't write, I don't think what I'm writing because I just start one line and then suddenly a poem is done and I leave it, I just write and second is done. And like an ATM, somebody is drawing money and wow. I'm being so greedy, I'm so scared. I said, may one day this gift stop coming, uh. may I won't be able after a few years. So I'm being so greedy, I am writing. Sometimes my husband in the middle of night, he said, what are you doing uh, on the notes? I just jump up, I just switch on my lamp and I said, e khayal aya. and you know, on the notes of my iPhone, yeah. uh, I write and he says, what are you doing? And I said, if I'll just blink my eyes, this idea will, will go. Will diminish. Yeah. So, so, so okay. can, can you, uh, uh, yeah, just now that we're on the topic, can you recite your favorite verse? I'm, I know it's it's like I, asking a very difficult question. You've written so much. I think much. Uh, after, uh, yeah, because now you know, sometimes uh, people have made me scared that I sometimes feel that I may go mad because now I don't exactly remember what I write. I mm. sometimes people say it's in your book, and I said it's my. Is it? Uh, are, is you it sure? uh, are you sure? <laughs> so, yeah, are you sure? So yeah, you know, this is. Uh, I will decide maybe after a break. I okay. open a book and okay. I'll, I'll and have classes. What you and want to I say. will just. So who book. who inspired you in poetry? I'm sure you you've mentioned a couple of names. You've mentioned uh, Mohsin Naqvi and you've mentioned Munir Niazi and Faiz Ahmed Faiz. But you know, there's one specific uh, role model that every poet has, and you know, he draws inspiration. He or she draws inspiration from that. Who do you feel now that you've written so much was your inspiration? Um, Farooq, I don't think it will be uh, be a justification. It will be fair. All, you know, okay. It won't be fair. Uh, uh, every poet has its own flavor. Uh, and I pick flavor. I mean, if I go for Ahmed Faraz, and if I go for Manir Niazi, and if I go for Faiz Ahmed Faiz, and if I go for Gulzar, uh, you know, they mm. are different. So I love them all, and I read them all. And in English poetry, um, um, there are so many beautiful poets there. So I think everyone was gifted and uniquely gifted. Yeah. So, uh, so you don't have any one favorite? No, no. Yeah, I love you. them all. Oh, you love I, them all. I, I feel that all gifts of like it's like packed gifts, we have to open it and see what inside. There's a crystal vase or there's a pen or there's a book. These are gifts of God and God is gifted every human being and everyone has its gift. Master, absolutely correct. Everyone have the... So, so tell me, you feel more comfortable in writing in English? That's what I gathered, right? Is no, it? no, no. No? Uh, there's a, there is the logic again. I'll catch you. I'm sorry if I'm talking no, no, a lot. Please, please. 
uh, my English poetry descend and come very quickly. In one month, I can do one Urdu. In one night, I can. They, they, it happened that my my manager was there and I was writing. And I think within one night, I I in half of Urdu poetry book I accomplished. That evenly come. Okay. Novels take time, um, uh, but what I realized, I said I want to send my message globally. Mm -hmm. I don't want that somebody should come forward and translate my poetry. So I realized that uh, in for English poetry, my audiences, and moreover, the whole South Asia, the more promising thing for Pakistan is, I am highest now from the National Library of Pakistan since last two years, I am the highest in Pakistan biblical. Okay. So in Pakistan biblical, highest mean that Pakistan has given so much literature from South Asia, from Pakistan in last two years that neither India or no neighboring country has given. Mm -hmm. I realized that this uh, South Asia was so rich in literature, in English literature even. Many English writers were there, but English poetry was seldom. One or two books or three mm. books yeah. or height of four books somebody has yeah. in whole South Asia. And still in the universities, only those old subjects, as you know, Punjab University contacted me. They said, Rumi, Shakespeare, few other repeated people come to do PhD and they don't have any English poet. Mm. My inspiration was that I received a phone call when National Library of Islam was started my section. And I received a call from Badin, from Kartaba University. Okay. Two students contacted my manager via my publisher. Badin Sindh? Sindh, yeah. Kartaba University. They said, Ki from where we can get ma'am's books? Because uh, uh, we know that National Library has the section from, from where we can get her. Because we want to do our MPhil and PhD in Ma'am Farzana Akib's literature when Pakistan has its own poetess. Why wow. would we go for Shakespeare? Why would we go for Rumi? Mm -hmm. And that was a deciding moment. And I told my manager, I said, last year, I think uh, hundreds of thousands of books I have got published and I have sent to Sindh, I have sent to Balochistan as gift to libraries. Because now I feel that this gift is coming and students are using my gift. Mm. And Punjab Library, uh, Punjab University started in, into three languages. They started translation of my books in Turkish, in Arabic, in Persian. So for the South Asian students to come to Punjab University and do PhD on my... So now oh. I said, no, this is, this is a mission of my life. Now mm. I won't write any novel. As long as I'm alive, um, I will leave as much as books for Pakistan that nobody ever no, could break the record. That's awesome. That's so, so great <laughs> to hear that. And and what what is the basic theme of your novels? That, that novels you know, the were basically about women rights and women about rights. history. My three novels were about true story, about crime, and about the miserable plight of uh, women. Uh, especially, I went to India. I went to Italy. I got stories from there. I got police reports from there. So my novels were basically on true stories, okay. and I got huge uh, applaud for for this. And and in American society, and my friends there, um, they were bestseller. Uh, then I and my last novel, Safran in the Hayyard, was about the Mughal era history. Oh, one wow. event of the Mughal era. Uh, so uh, I you, I don't write fiction. Which I, which event of the Mughal era? Um, uh, Bahadur Shah Zafar. Bahadur Shah. The last days of Bahadur that, Shah Zafar. That's the Netflix contacted me. Oh. Uh, but then you know, it, I, I just uh, um, you know I just narrated that era Mughal era. They thought it's it's going to be very expensive series because you have there's the the, mm, the, the clips back in the history yeah. uh, from where we'll just decorate. The so you've written all about the Bahadur Shah Zafar's era, how it not, started. Not about Bahadur Shah Zafar era. Hmm. It it was um, uh, related, if I'll tell the suspense will kill, ah, but it was the event of the history mm -hmm. uh, related mm -hmm. to Bahadur Shah Zafar. Wow. And okay. then I add touch of fiction to enhance the beauty of yeah, the yeah, novel, yeah, yeah, yeah. but my novels are reality based novel. They are not total fiction. Okay, okay. Yeah. Great, great Farzana. That's awesome. Uh, viewers, we are in conversation with Ms. Farzana Akib and uh, the conversation continues. Mashallah, she has so many accolades to her credit. We're going to talk about that. Then she has a different side. She is a human rights activist also, and uh, she does a lot of social work. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned.
Welcome back viewers, uh, sky is the limit, I am Farooq Hassan and I have Ms. Farzana Akif with me and we are in conversation. Farzana is a person with uh, versatile uh, talent and uh, you know she was telling us about her poetry and the novels that she has written. But now I would like to uh, talk about another facet of her life which is being a human rights activist and doing so much of social work, she is contributing a lot towards the society. So, let us hear that from Fazana Akif. Fazana, what made you come? Are you one of those women that wants to have the you know feminism idea or the power of women, you know, who wants to propagate that uh, concept and that is why you came into human rights or what was the inspiration? Not at all, okay. not at all. Okay. Um, uh, I, we just want to fight uh, against injustice. Okay. My journey again like my literature started very early. Okay. I am among those uh, maybe now if I would say definitely uh, in, in my own word I am chosen. Uh, maybe God wants to take some work from me. Uh, I at very early stage at the age of 16 I was celebrity. I was a uh, PTV channel at 8.30 I was doing show. Pushpak oh. uh, Shudyat Saiba was doing it in Karachi and before her Feroza was in uh, Matab Rashti. When it came to uh, Lahore television station, they changed the name Daraksha and I was I was a debater, oh. I was a poetist. So, uh, general manager saw and producer saw me and they just fought with my daddy that we want this girl. And you know at the uh, grade 11, um, they took me uh, as replacement of Kushpak Shujat Saiba mm. and my Dubatta, they were doing backcoming and making me look older. older. Uh, and 830 program and uh, within two years I become celebrity and you know college friends and kids were after me to give autograph. Mm. And then uh, suddenly uh, government gave me scholarship, um, I, I had my position and then uh, luckily scholarship uh, came my way and I studied in Canada, again I felt chosen, I said daddy you did not spend any money on me and everything is my path is, when I came, came back from uh, Canada after doing my graduation, again a big big leading media house just followed me and they said just establish our forum, I said your forum you are such huge big name and they said yes and they paid me a lot and I was sitting in, in, in a biggest media house of Pakistan as head of the forum and uh, many people who are now in the journalism big name. Uh, I, they were all under me, I, I was interviewing them, a 16, 18 years old girl and then uh, you know SM Zafar Saab law minister was law minister and plus he was having human rights society and Asma Saiba was having human rights commission of Pakistan, they approached me and say, they said please do come forward and work with us and then I joined. At the age of 18 I started working serving society as youth leader, as uh, activist, we used to go to the villages, we used to, we used to go to any place where we were called. You studied in Lahore? I studied in Lahore, yes. Okay, and and after my uh, high school, I went for my uh, graduation uh, to Canada. Graduate Canada, yes. Okay, and then you came back. Then I came back, and then again I did my masters. In so here. social work was something which was in you. It was in me. And you just exposed it, you know, as the way you could. So yes. right now, what kind of social work are you specifically involved in? That journey never stopped. Yeah. I got married um, to Akib and he never wanted me to continue with journalism. Mm -hmm. And then I got give birth to my da daughter and I decided that okay, now I will just raise my child as a good mom. Yeah. And then we had to travel and last 8 years we were in Dubai also. Uh, so I was waiting but I thought okay, what I can do by staying at home. I said okay, I will keep writing, mm -hmm. I cannot sit That's down. That is in your hands. Yes, so I, I never stopped writing but I never uh, practiced journalism or human rights the way I needed to be with big. From my home places, from Canada, from uh, Dubai, I had a group of women, uh, European women like uh, we are saving life of cats in Dubai, we are, we are just going somewhere where we need that there is a flood victims or any call is come. So th that work I never stopped, My I called people and people came forward. I do not know from where people came forward, in Canada I lived I left a group there, in Dubai I lived I left a social group there, still they are with my organization. In India, in Sri Lanka I went there and Indian um, Taj uh, uh, hotels chains, uh, a general manager wife was an Indian girl, she started in Sri Lanka, she started work with me. So wherever I went, then when I came back to Pakistan I took it seriously, I said come, let us come. 
I called uh, Manizi Hashmi Saibade, she was my teacher. I called Nasra Javed Iqbal Saibai, she is on my board, she is my teacher. I called uh, the then uh, governor's wife, I said, come, come join head mid, we have to work. In the whole Lahore, the whole Punjab came forward. Everyone, they, are, they, they said, please tell us what to do. And I said, look, I hate NGOs. They're, they're very good NGOs in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. They're very good people, you know, like Dr. Saqib's NGO. There are many good, beautiful NGOs. But still, there are bad name attached to NGOs. I don't want that people should think that this lady came into this field to, you know, like other people doing showing off workshops and doing. I said, we will call it an organization. And we will serve society with our abilities. We will gather people. We will we'll, uh, make them aware about population. Population is a huge issue. Poverty is a huge issue. Uh, when winter comes, when flood comes, we call. We all bring things from our homes. Mm. We make trucks. We mm. go. Everyone individually comes with me. But I don't take, take money. I don't take donations. I said, come with me. Bring whatever you have in your bag. So that it's a first-hand experience. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. And now my three organizations and now my uh, income of my books, whatever is coming from Amazon or Wordover, it's directly going to Your United. That organization is, mashallah, going by leap and bound. Uh, many young students and medical students and they are just working for me. They, they donated all your income to? Did, did directly. My books are mashallah. directly go to their accounts. And, and what about human rights organization? Like, are you working with some organization? You have your own or what? These are my own. Now I am the CEO of the, the three, three organization internationally. Although in American board, uh, Dubai board, uh, Indian board, uh, people are working, but they want me to be the chairperson. Wow. That's their, uh, you know. And what kind of names do you have associated uh, with the board? It's your United, United We Rise, which I later on came to know. It's our army logo. I said, oh, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> but that is your United. That is my lead organization, okay. then WIO, Women International Organization, mm -hmm. and Stand Tall We All. This is specifically for women rights, Stand Tall, okay. like domestic violence against uh, servants. We have few lawyers attached with us. And Nasraji is obviously the head of the our law team. Nasra, yeah, right. yeah. So, but the your United also. My three organization. We, if, if any case come, with our talent we solve them. We, I have lawyers with me. They take their case freely. We fight for them. Um, acid victim, divorce, um, uh, homicide, anything. Wow. Yeah. What other interests besides uh, human rights, social work, writing, poetry, do you have? Like, are you, do you like cooking? Do you, are you a social person? Do you lo like going out, hanging out with friends? Are you into any sports, any games? I'm into a sport because my husband is a sportsman. <laughs> a, we're going to talk about that in the last segment, but yeah. But yes, I, I love life. Life is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Life is so colorful. I, I love to dress up. I love to um, um, to buy clothes. I love to wear them. I think all, all, all women yeah. like to do that. But I, I, I'm not... Not brand conscious. I'm not uh -huh. at all. But I, I go for beauty. Uh -huh. um, I love uh, uh, to go to gardens. I love greenery. I got, love to go to mountains. And, um, I have uh, I have craze for mountains. If within one or two months I don't go to up North Hill, I feel depression. Um, I celebrate life every day. Uh, Farooq, um, I am very social. I have, I have many groups of friends. Okay. Um, but. After period, now you know I am too committed to my rights and to my write-ups that those birthday parties and weddings, uh, there I now started sending my excuse and my friends are so beautiful, they understand. They said, we know, we see you on mm. social media what you are doing. So we excuse you from weddings. Wow. I said, I, I don't want that I come in on Mandy's and um, I just waste my night. Oh. Uh, I have a lot to do. <laughs> uh, but I celebrate, yes, I celebrate each and every moment of life. Very good. And yes. And do you like cooking? I hate cooking. You hate cooking? I hate cooking, but uh, I love a um, few things. Uh, I make uh, pasta and steak for my daughter. Baking, uh, sometime I, I do uh, love to do that. But otherwise, traditional cooking, uh, kitchen is the only department where my husband says, okay, if I'm not home and if you are alone, you will die. And if you don't have a servant, you won't go to the kitchen. Uh. And, uh, you know, kitchen is a department that's not made for me. But rest of the house is made for me. Each and every corner I will spend and sit. A kitchen is not my uh, domain. Domain. It is. It is not. 
I, in, into me, it's not. Okay, it is not your terrain for yeah. that matter. <laughs> so, but are you, uh, you like your food, right? Are I, you food? I, I love, I love all kind of exotic, where we travel a lot. And wherever we go, we prefer to have that country's cuisine. We love to um, try new. You're experimenting. Yeah, experimenting every time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so tell me, coming back to human rights, since you are an activist also, you mentioned that uh, you know you help uh, women in distress. You know, like uh, domestic aid servants. Uh, you know, who land into trouble and all. So, do you have a whole panel of lawyers also with you, whom you uh, you know refer the case to? How does one approach you if someone is in trouble, specifically women, females in Pakistan? How do they approach you? Yes, it's 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 a message for all. Yes, my organization, Your United and Stand Tall, Your United. If they Google it, uh, we have hundreds of thousands of people as director, and we have given different domains to different people. If lawyers are with my organization, so they will only see the law cases. If teachers are with my organization, they will see if any student requires any scholarship and if they can help. In any, uh, if if the po poverty in orphanages, uh, people related to that work. So there are hundreds of thousands of directors on my board, and people contact. They get our number sometimes on Messenger, sometimes on Facebook. My whole team is active. People know us. They contact my people. They contact us. Then we have board meeting. Then we decide to whom we have to forward this case, okay. and who can handle it well. Who has resources? Who is volunteer? Uh -huh. Who can do that? You know, this Murray incident happened yeah, the when 19, the I, I, yeah, I, ice one, yes. Yeah, they, they, in the snowfall, they and were caught and they were I was sitting in Lahore and I said, what to do? And you know, some of uh, my uh, board of directors, people, they called me, ladies from Islamabad, that we know few people. They said, we know Jamaat Islami, we know that school in Murray. We can get it vacate. In the Murray school, we can arrange bed. And while sitting in Lahore, I think two buildings of uh, huge uh, buildings in uh, Murray um, uh, vicinity, we have arranged for people to sleep. To stay and, and eat and food. and food and, you know, stuff. And all my Islamabad and my Murray um, people who are voluntarily with me, mm. we don't spend, we don't ask for money. We said go directly serve. This this pool of funds comes from donations or we don't we don't have any account for pool of any situation. Mine is yes because for the for the uh, if I am doing a literature revival from my organization so in different colleges and universities I send trophies I send book so my uh, that income of my money and my personal income goes there for okay. trophies and for promotions but if there is a serious crisis then we call our people mm. that who is there who will help it ah. and people come forward okay yeah okay. Uh, they, they obviously so pakistan is probably one of the highest charity giving nations in the world yes and uh, we do look after each other you know as you might see whenever there's a catastrophe or a disaster uh, you know, uh, the whole nation comes together. Exactly. And you know, the question I always ask is, why does it take a disaster or a catastrophe to bring us together on one platform? Yeah. Why aren't we together all the time? You know, like uh, that's that's what I feel personally at times. You know, like it it bo it bothers me. So, any wish left undone? Anything in life that you thought you would do or you want to do and you still didn't find time to do it? Uh, my journey, in fact, has been a phenomenal, blessed journey. Mm -hmm. But yet still, I realized that 20 years of my life mm -hmm. were not as active okay. after marriage. So you marriage. want to bring back those 20 years? No, I don't. But the day and night I'm working now, mm -hmm. I am just compensating those years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to I'm sure you've been a very good uh, wife to your husband and you've raised a beautiful daughter. So I'm sure that takes time. So, I, I don't think it's wasted time. Yes. yes, creatively you might say that you probably didn't get enough time to write or something. Or, you know, that, that, that's a given thought. So, is your daughter also into writing or arts or poetry? Yes, or? absolutely. She is. She's just like me. Inborn, mm -hmm. uh, she makes beautiful paintings without learning and people see and they say, who made it? And, and, and without learning a child, ever since she was in grade one, um, uh, she was in an international school and th that big competition grade one she won in the mm. painting. So she is a very good painter mm -hmm. uh, without learning. Mm -hmm. She never went to any institution or uh, and she's a very good writer and she's now uh, studying in Canada in Sussex University. Brighton. Oh, you sent her to Canada also? Uh, yeah, I'm no, sorry, 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 UK. UK. Uh, UK. Okay. Uh, and uh, she's in Sussex, uh, Brighton. Okay. And uh, she's studying um, cultural and media studies there. Wow. And uh, yes, she's a very 
very good writer and I sometimes say that when I see your write-ups and your things, I, I feel that if you will start writing one day, you will just, um, um, you just leave me behind. Yes, we'll go, we're going to take a short break and uh, after we come back, uh, I am not sure if all of you know, but um, Fazana is married to one of our superstars of Pakistan cricket, Akib Javed. So we're going to talk a little bit about her personal life, how she met Akib and how it all evolved. So don't go anywhere, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back viewers, sky is the limit, I am Farooq Hassan and I have Farzana Akif with me right now. Farzana, was it your love for cricket that introduced you to Akif or uh, you just met him by chance? The biggest mockery I had from the media mm -hmm. when my, my marriage was all set and uh, media called me and I, I said I don't know whether Akif is a bowler or batsman. <laughs> and that, you that, didn't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> I met Akib uh, uh, when I was studying in Canada okay. and uh, during those 2-3 uh, years, 4 uh, years, I was disconnected okay. uh, with the, the latest boys and Pakistani cricket. I knew the cricket old... Cricket was never your favourite game? Cricket was never my favourite game, although I am from a cricketing family. All the renowned 4-5 names who are leading Pakistan nowadays, they are from my family. Okay. And, um, and uh, all the Zaman Park cricketers are related to my father's first cousin. And my father was also from Mahamdan, a cricketer. So that craze of cricket I saw into my father's eyes made me revolt it from cricket. Mm -hmm. Because all our life from school we used to come and we used to see our father with a loud uh, television set watching mm -hmm. TV and watching uh, cricket matches. I was not into cricket at all. But I knew all the big name, old names I knew. But during my studies, Akib said he came in 88, 89. So that time was I was not in Pakistan. So when I met Akib, I knew he is a cricketer and they came from Sahara Cup, but I had no idea that uh, he is a bowler or, or which position he you plays. You just met him as a we sportsman. Just, sportsman. We uh, actually it happened that uh, one of my uh, father's friend and uncle was by then he was the ambassador uh, to Canada, okay. and his daughter was you know studying with me. She was my class fellow, mm -hmm. and cricket team always has a culture. Now I got married, so I realized that wherever we go, our our ambassador definitely throw hosts you for uh, dinner. Dinner. So they they said. Ki, girls come enjoy because cricketers are coming, Sahara Cup, so meal at the place, it is his house, not in the embassy. So we were there and they were there. This uh, was what, 20 years back? It's like, uh, yeah, my, my marriage, mashallah, 24 years. 24 years back. And two years our engagement, 26 years back. Okay, 26 years back. So, okay. uh, yeah, so I was doing my graduation there. Okay. So he saw me there and in journal, you know, uh, but I was little... Uh, Reluctant, hesitant, hesitant. I, I feel bad for girls, It's I still I say who are you know running after with the autograph books, I am okay. not that type. So. You want people to come up to you for interview? I don't know, <laughs> for, for <autograph. laughs> I, I don't know but, but I don't feel comfortable <coughs> going getting it, I never get uh, <coughs> autograph. That's what I keep when we got married and he met me and he contacted me and okay. he said that, that was the only thing that I was trying to talk to you and you were ignoring. Okay. So yeah, he saw me there met me there but uh, there wasn't any number exchange there wasn't any and uh, then uh, he now tells me on media he says i felt very regretful that yeah. you know why uh, i didn't take the number yeah and then again uh, in pakistan after two years when i was in pakistan i attended one wedding and then aki was on the same wedding and somehow he got my number and he called me and you reciprocated yeah i did you liked him then i and you uh, but after n talking to him and knowing him you still didn't develop an interest for cricket? Now I have. No, now. not now. At that time. When no, I started then. You after, started after then watching started cricket. Then I started. Now you then watching I him. But you know, he was so tricky. During our conversation, until we got married, I used to ask him. He was out of... Uh, Are you a bowler or a batsman? Uh, yeah, he said, forget about it. Don't talk about it. Don't, I, I, he, he used to trick me. So I said, okay, don't talk. Okay. So yeah, but uh, when I got married, okay. afterward, you know, I came to know that he's, he played a very vital role in 92 World Cup. I yeah, didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. Then I saw YouTubes and things, you know, and okay. you know. And and how is it 
how does it feel to be married to a superstar? It was amazing. It was of amazing. Of course, it was amazing. Yeah, and all the glory and yeah. the limelight. Yeah, my wedding was, you know, being prim, uh, um, ten days earlier. All the newspapers are publishing news, and you know they are just paparazzis, and yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, you feel VIP. Of you course, you feel VIP. Yeah. And and was Akib Bhai always supportive uh, towards your passion of writing and social work? Was he? Did he contribute towards that? He has a, a little regret, uh, although uh, now, uh, you know, when I got married, my journalism was at the peak. Um, uh, first thing which I have regret in my father, when I, I was at the peak of my career of journalism, uh, when I was on the forum head of a big media house and I mm. was a spokesperson, uh, my father suddenly said that you have to get married and you have to, you know, you quit journalism. Mm -hmm. I, I was at the peak by that time. Mm -hmm. Every uh, SM Zafar, I told you, uh, Asma Gilani, SM Zafar, I was on the uh, scenario of Pakistan. I was, you know, uh, Muhammad Khan Junejo uh, used to say that that, that, that girl Safi has to have speech with me when I will come to Pakistan. I mm -hmm. was on the front pages of the newspapers. I was going like this and mm -hmm. my father said, come down. That sometimes gives me pain that I should have continued with my journalism. Then I thought maybe I'll get married to and then my husband would. Then when I got married and I said, Akib, I want to continue. I saw that he was reluctant. Mm. I said, do whatever you want at home. I don't, I don't want you to. Uh, now, Have a public life. Yeah, now he sometimes says that was, he said, I am very unfortunate that that shouldn't have happened. That such huge talent you have. And I just, uh, we all, we all men suppressed being brother being father being husband in any capacity we try to suppress you girls but now um, otherwise uh, i feel that i'm so blessed he loves me so much he's such a beautiful human being he's such a beautiful father such a beautiful husband such beautiful son um, i haven't seen a, a multifaceted of a man into all roles such beautiful and mm. accomplished man Okay. Um, so I feel very lucky to have in have him in my life. Wow! Yes. Wow! Yeah. That's uh, I'm sure Akibai would be amazed to hear this. So you still follow cricket? Yeah. Now Lahore Kalandar and you know where, where, in, in matches they are related. If they are not, I don't have time. You don't I have am time. Too busy. Who's your favorite cricketer these days? Um, Shaheen Shah Afridi and Akib's all new boys. He he made he them. He trained and them. I, yeah, and I've I've seen their journey and I pray for them. And you know, one day I said and I often said. Uh, we planned one daughter. Mm -hmm. When we met, I keep came to know that I, I am a very wholehearted enthusiast uh, for the women rights. And mm -hmm. he said, uh, yes, uh, I, I feel that um, we are, you women are not being dealt well. If you don't give son as their male um, uh, hair, uh, my, my sister suffered this, your uh, cousin suffered this, that they want son being born in, out of this marriage, any marriage. And uh, he said, um, I promise you that if we'll get married, I'll pray that God give us the first child as daughter and I will not uh, have second chance to have a son. And I will see how we cannot uh, leave our legacy with our daughter mm. if we have something. Wow. So we announced on our wedding day uh, in front of the media. I didn't realize I was just sitting and Akib said that I will, I, I'm praying that my wife is working for women's rights and I to just to give due respect to daughters and to, to respect their birth. If we'll have first child as a daughter, we will not have a second child. And God gave me first child Mashallah. as daughter. And What's her name? Uh, Ukba Akib. U-Q-B-A. Oh. I, I find this name from history very similar to Akib. Okay. So I said, uh, yeah, Ukba and Akib, same alphabets. Okay. So yeah. So, uh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Great. So, uh, Fazana, there's a lot to talk and mashallah, you're a very good conversationalist. I must say that. Uh, but obviously, time is limited always, on, not, on, not in our hands. But I would like you to recite, as I said in the beginning of the program, I would like to recite some of your poetry, okay. a verse in Urdu and a verse in English, if possible. Okay, uh, you have to forgive me because I, um, I will just definitely, I will. Forgiven. Your, your wish is my command. I will no, do no, it. Very kind of you. Uh, but uh, you know, I have all the media channel when asked. I have just remembered three, four Urdu, mm -hmm. and I repeatedly do that. I don't carry my books with me, and okay. since I'm writing a I lot, I can see all the books yeah, uh, I, I, in I your background. I'm writing a lot now. There's no time to memorize them because mm. every day I'm writing 20 poems and so yeah um, and old poetry maybe you have heard it on the channel many times mm -hmm. uh, in Urdu and then I'll just uh, okay sure it please for. go ahead 
my first book of Urdu poetry at the age of 18, um, I was in madly in love with Akib and that, that book I wrote, <laughs> book. so I, I, that one of the poem which I have written for Akib, uh, I'll, I'll just recite a few, uh, yeah, its title is for Akib. A title is for Akib. Uh, for Akib, yeah. Mera Vajud, Tera Naam Istaara Ho. Mera Vajud, Tera Naam Istaara Ho. Mera Vajud, Tera Naam Istaara Ho. Main jo kahun, jo likhun, wo sabhi tumhara ho. Main jo kahun, jo likhun, wo sabhi tumhara ho. Mera har dard, Tere ruh se ho kar guzre. Mera har dard, Tere ruh se ho kar guzre. Mera har ashk, Tere aankh ka sitara ho. Mera har ashk, Tere aankh ka sitara ho. Aur ye taaj o takht, Kisi aur ko vadiyat ho. Ye taaj o takht, किसी और को वदियत हूँ मेरे लिए तो बस एक नाम ही तुम्हारा हो मेरे लिए तो बस एक नाम ही तुम्हारा हो और जो हम चलें तो चले गर्दिशे दौरा जो हम चलें तो चले गर्दिशे दौरा जो हम रुकें तो हर एक वक्त ही हमारा हो जो हम रुकें तो हर एक वक्त ही हमारा हो और मेरी समात पर कोई भी सुर न दस्तक दे मेरी समात पर कोई भी सुर न दस्तकते बस एक आवाज हो कि तुमने मुझे पुकारा हो बस एक आवाज हो कि तुमने मुझे पुकारा हो मेरा वजूद तेरा नाम इस तारा हो मैं जो कहूँ जो लिखूँ वो सभी तुम्हारा हो and now you'll recite something in English for us I don't exactly remember so I have to see my notes in the phone and if you allow me and I will look very ugly with the glasses no 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 I'm sure you look more philosophical some stranger somewhere on the earth and over the ethereal sapphire still loves you and care some stranger somewhere still waiting for you twirling in despair Writing thou name on her poems, sending warm prayers in near some stranger somewhere. Still holding on one dream in her hands, tossing in the night, inviting the sunshine to come here. The long dark shadow of the moon may gulp this half dawn dream, she scare some stranger somewhere, still begs a sip of love. Despite an ocean written in her share, some stranger somewhere. Thank you so much, Fazana. It was really a pleasure meeting you. Such an inspiration to all the young women, specifically watching this program, and all the youngsters in general. Thank you. Um, keep on writing, breaking records, and bringing laurels for Pakistan. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Uh, viewers, this was uh, Fazana Akib and another episode of Sky is the Limit and uh, with Farooq Hassan, of course. And inshallah, ta'ala, I'll be seeing you again in another exciting episode of Sky is the Limit. Till then, Allah Hafiz.